In this video, we're going to take a look at tree diagrams. So a tree diagram is used to denote the outcomes of events that occur in succession. So to begin with here, let's think about a very basic example of somebody playing a game of chess. So they can either win, draw, or lose. So that means we're going to have three branches then to represent the three outcomes. So my top branch here represents winning. The middle branch here represents drawing. And the bottom branch here represents losing. Okay. So if I put down, say, these first two probabilities here, let's say the probability of winning is 0.6. And the probability of drawing here, let's say that's 0.3. Now, obviously, these three individual probabilities here must sum to 1. But then in that case, probably losing here would be 1 minus 0.6 plus 0.3. That would give us 0.1. Okay, so that's the first thing to note there, that the sum of the probabilities here for each individual branch, the sum of those probabilities must add to 1. Okay, now let's say we play a second game of chess. So this is my first game. Let's say we play a second game then. Okay, so that means we're going to now draw another three branches from each individual outcome. Okay, so if this is to win. This is to draw and this is to lose. So again, W, D, and L. So the first thing to note here is if these are independent, so this is for the second game now, if these are independent, then what that means is the probability won't change between each game. Okay. So in other words, if the results of the first game doesn't affect the second game, then the probabilities will remain constant. The probability of winning here will be 0.6. Probability of drawing will again be 0.3. And the probability of losing will again be 0.1. Okay. And we just need to replicate that now two more times here for drawing and losing. Now, like you can see, when we have three outcomes like this, it can get quite messy quite quick. So if I try and fit them on here, see if we can do that. That should work. So again, W, D, and L. And again, the probabilities will remain the same. Okay. 0.6, 0.3, one and then finally one more time here at the bottom. That's to win, draw, and lose. Okay, and again, the probabilities will remain the same, so 0.6, 0.3, and 0.1. Okay, obviously if you were to consider a third game, I'd have to draw three branches from this W, three from this D, three from this L, and then we keep going, another three from this W, another three from this D, another three from this L, and so on. So in that case, we wouldn't really consider a third game here. That would be a lot of possible outcomes. Um, so generally in an exam, you will only consider, say, the first two events like this, the first game and the second game. Um, but it is worth knowing that obviously you could keep going for the third game, fourth game, and so on. Okay. So if we then want to find probabilities on, say, this example here, so let's say we want to find the probability of winning both games here. The probability of winning twice, that would be probability of W, W, that's win, win. Well, we just follow the branches here. So that's going to be W here, multiplied by this W here. The probability of winning in that case would be 0.6 times 0.6. So that's going to be 6 over 10 times 6 over 10. That's going to give me 36 over 100 there. Or in other words, 0.36. Okay. Obviously, the probability of losing two games in a row. So that would be the probability of L, L. Well, again, I would just be following the correct branches here. So to lose would be that one. To lose again would be that one. So I just multiply these two probabilities together. Okay. So that can be 1 over 10 times 1 over 10 again. In that case, we're going to get 1 over 100. Or in other words, 0 0.01 there. Okay. So that's how we find probabilities. Remember, we just multiply it across the branches like so. Okay. So there we have it. So that's our very quick introduction there to tree diagrams. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at a couple of practice questions. So we start with question one here. We've got a bag that contains eight green marbles and four yellow marbles. The marble is taken at random from the bag and not replaced. So if a second marble is then taken from the bag, for part A, we're asked to draw a tree diagram to represent this information. 
of the part A then. Well, to draw this tree diagram here, the first thing to consider is how many um, outcomes do we have? Well, the two outcomes here, we have a pick a green marble or a yellow marble, so that means we're going to have two branches. If I use the top branch here to represent picking a green marble, that's for green. And then the bottom branch here represents picking a yellow marble. Okay. Now, if a second marble is taken from the bag, that means we now need another two branches from each outcome here. Okay. Like so. And again, another two branches here from picking a yellow marble. So what we need now is the probabilities here. And let me not forget the labels here. So this will be green again. Be yellow. Will also be green. And this will be yellow. Okay. So now let's include the probabilities here. So to begin with, for the first time we pick a marble. Well, that means there's 12 marbles in total because there's eight green, four yellow. So that's going to be out of 12. Same again here, that'll be out of 12. And in this case, if there's eight green marbles, that means the probability will be A out of 12. That's A out of 12. And if there's four yellow marbles, that means the probability will be four out of 12. Okay, so hopefully nice and straightforward there just to begin with. So then, if we take a green marble here, well, the fact that we don't replace it is important here. Okay, so because we don't replace the marble that we pick, that means there'll be one less marble each time we take a marble out of the bag. So for the second time then, that means all my probabilities here will be out of 11. Okay, so that'll be out of 11. Same here. And then finally, same here. So if we pick a green marble to begin with, that means there'll be one less green marble as well in the bag. That means there'll be seven green. And there'll be four yellow. So obviously the number of yellows won't change. But then if we take a yellow marble um, the first time we pick a marble, well, the number of green won't change, that'll still be eight. But the number of yellows will reduce by one. So rather than it being four, that would be three. And then the last thing to just double check here is that the sum of the probabilities for each of these two branches here adds to one. So eight over 12 plus four over 12, that's one. Seven over 11 plus four over 11 is one. And then eight over 11 plus three over 11 is also one, okay? That's just a little thing we should always double check there that obviously the branches do sum to one. Um, and there we have it, so that's our solution to part A, giving us the tree diagram. So for part B then, it says find the probability that the marbles are the same colour. So there's two possibilities here, okay? So if the marbles are the same colour, we can either get green and green. We can either get green twice. Or we can get yellow twice, okay? Yellow, yellow. So what's the probability of getting two greens here? The probability of G, G there representing two greens. Well, that would be A over 12 times seven over 11. So A over 12 times seven over 11. Let's just do that on our calculator here. So A over 12, A over 12 and times that by seven over 11. And that gives me 14 over 33. We're now going to find the probability of getting two yellows here. So that's going to be P, Y, Y there, representing the probability of two yellows. That's going to be 4 over 12 times 3 over 11. 4 over 12 times 3 over 11. Again, just put this into your calculator. So 4 over 12 times 3 over 11. And that gives me 1 over 11. Okay. You get 1 over 11 there. So in that case then, the probability that the marbles are the same colour, that would be the sum of these two individual probabilities here. Okay, so therefore, for B here, um, our probability then, let's write down in full, is going to be equal, like we said, to 14 over 33 plus 1 over 11. So 14 over 33 plus 1 over 11. And, well, to add these together, I need to times this by 3. So I'm going to be, or oh, that would be, 3 over 33, 14 over 33. So it's going to give me 17 over 33 there. Okay. That's part B. 
So let's just clear all this just so we can um, have a go at part C. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to use the eraser here so I don't get rid of my tree diagram. Save us having to do it again. Get rid of this here. Okay, so we're pretty much there now. Right, so for part C then, it says find the probability that the marbles are different colors. So again, we just use our tree diagram to help us here. So what are the options that we can have? Well, we can have green and yellow. We can have green, yellow. And I can also have yellow, green. Okay. So plus yellow, green. Okay, because obviously green, green, they're the same color. Yellow, yellow would be the same color as well. So we now need the probability of getting green, yellow. The probability of getting green, yellow. That would be 8 over 12 times 4 over 11. 8 over 12 times 4 over 11. So again, just put this into your calculator here. So 8 over 12 and times it by 4 over 11. And what I get here is 8 over 33. Now finding the probability of yellow green, probability of yellow green here, that's going to be 4 over 12. We times that here by green, which is 8 over 11. So in that case, then 4 over 12 times this by 8 over 11, and I get 8 over 33 again. Okay. So now to finish with here, like we said, we just need to add these two probabilities together. So therefore, for C, the probability here is going to be 8 over 33 plus 8 over 33. So in other words, that's two lots of 8 over 33. Which in this case would give me 16 over 33 there. Okay. Now what you might have noticed there is with your answer to part B, so this probability here was 17 over 33. Obviously, if I wanted the answer to part C, what I could have done is just done 1 minus 17 over 33. That would have given me the 16 over 33 there. And that would have been absolutely fine if you could have spotted that. What we would have worked out originally there was green, green. And we would have worked out yellow and yellow. So obviously, the only two things remaining then would be green yellow and yellow green so obviously the sum then of these would just be all of these added together if you're working backwards i could just do 1 minus 17 over 33 which would give me the 16 over 33 so like i said if you did notice that you could have also used that method as well um, but just so we can use or show the method here of using the tree diagram i wanted to show the slightly longer way of doing it but either way you should get 16 over 33 there for part c and that gives the solution there to question one and finally, we take a look at the very last question here. We've got the probability of Bradley winning a game of chess, and this is given as 0.75. The probability of drawing is 0.15, and then the probability of losing is 0.1. So we're given that Bradley plays two games of chess in a row, and his result in the second game is independent of the result in the first game. So for part A here, we're asked to draw a tree diagram to represent this information. So there's three outcomes here. He either wins the game of chess, he either draws it, or he loses. So that means we're going to have three branches here. We don't have loads of room. It's going to look something like this. So the top branch here represents winning. The middle branch here represents drawing. And then the bottom branch here represents losing. Okay. And we know the probability of winning here. That's 0 0.75. The probability of drawing is 0 0.15. And the probability of losing is 0.1. Okay, now we're given that Bradley plays two games of chess in a row. So what that means is we now need another three branches from each outcome here. Okay, and like we said, we're not going to have loads of room to do this. So let's see if we can just about fit this on. Another three here from draw. And finally, another three here at the bottom for if we lose the first game. Okay. So these will follow the same patterns. It'd be win, draw, lose, win, draw, lose, and again finally win, draw, lose. 
Okay? And obviously, the probabilities now will be the same. They'll be constant because we know the result in the second game is independent of the result in the first game. So it doesn't matter if he wins the first game, draws the first game, or loses this, uh, the first game. It doesn't affect the probabilities for the second game. So they'll all be the same. What we need to do now is just jot those all down. 0 0.75, 0 0.15, 0 0.1. Like you can see, the, the biggest challenge with this part A here is just fitting everything on. Uh, so 0 0.75 again, 0 0.15, and 0 0.1. And then finally again, 0 0.75 here, uh, 0 0.15, and then 0 0.1. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our tree diagram there to represent the information that we're given the second question. So for part B then, it says find the probability that Bradley wins both games. So for Bradley to win both of these games here, just using the tree diagram, obviously he must win the first one and he must win the second one. Okay, so that's going to be 0.75 or three quarters. In fact, let me just write down the full notation. So probably win, win here, VW. That's going to be 3 over 4 times 3 over 4. Okay, so he's won the first one, and then won the second one. So 3 over 4 times 3 over 4, that's going to give us 9 over 16 there. Okay, so the probability that Bradley wins both games is 9 over 16. That's the solution to B. So for part C then, it just says find the probability that the wins, um, that he wins, I should say. That he wins the second game given he loses the first game okay so if we lose the first game and then win the second game what would that probably be or well, then we just multiplied those two values together so the probability of lw so we lose the first one then win the second one that's going to be 0.1 times 0.75 or in other words um, 1 over 10 times 3 over 4 and in that case then 1 over 10 times 3 over 4 I'm going to get 3 over 40 there okay so that's the solution to C there so that's probably that we uh, win the second game given we lose the first game so I would say it's just 0 0.1 times 0 0.75 and then finally for part D here it says find the probability that Bradley draws both games so again if I just clear a bit of room here just so we can answer this one Let's just get rid of part B here. Okay. So for part D, find the probability that Bradley draws both games. It's going to be the probability of draw followed by another draw. So again, if we just use our tree diagram here, that's going to be following this branch and then this branch again. So it's going to be 0 0.15 times 0 0.15. And if I just throw that into my calculator here, so 0.15 times 0.15, what that gives us then is 0.0225. Okay, and then we have it, so that's our solution to D, and that gives us the solution to question two overall. And that brings us to the end of this video on tree diagrams. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for probability.